joining us today. I want you just to surrender. You know, one thing that I found in life is that life happens. Things happen. But the way we praise our way through it. See, there's never a praise that's more necessary than when you're in a problem. The problem produces something that usually takes you to the rock bottom and and you find out who the rock is at the bottom, which is Jesus. If it wouldn't have been for the pandemic, I have heard so many people reach out to me this week just saying this pandemic has shifted my perspective. I've never even wanted to talk to Jesus. I didn't even know who Jesus was. But this pandemic has brought me to the feet of Jesus. And so today I'm telling you in the next 30 minutes, God is going to shift your trajectory. I prophesy over you right now that you ain't seen nothing yet. I prophesy over you right now that in the next 30 minutes that God is about to shift your trajectory. He is about to shift your family. He is about to shift your situation. He's about to shift your circumstance. All he needs you to do is get out of the way. Get out of the way. Just physically get up and shift. Physically get up and any time that your favorite team on the planet is about to make a touchdown or about to hit a goalie or about to kick a hockey bunt. Y'all start screaming. The whole auditorium starts vibrating. Why? Because something about an expectation, the expectancy of what God is about to do makes me want to shout, makes me want to dance, makes me want to move my feet. So wherever you are right now, in order to get to that next level, you got to Praise your way out of the situation that you're in. You gotta push. You gotta shimmy. You gotta do whatever you gotta do to get what you ain't got. So today, Father, I speak to every person on replay, to every person that is right now in this room. Our online campus, my RTK Inner Circle, our Limitless Church family, you are not forgotten there is hope there's hope for your situation there's hope for your predicament there's hope for your tomorrow there's hope when you just move out move out of what you can see move out of what you know and step into the unknown nothing ever happens until you shimmy you gotta shimmy you gotta shake you gotta break out of that cocoon of complacency Father, we thank you. There's a beautiful spirit in this place. The same spirit that's in here is at your house. Well, Kim, I don't think you know. You don't know what I'm going through. I may not, but God does. And there's nothing in this world that's taken him by surprise today. Not one thing in your family is taking him. The thing that I love so much about God is that before I was ever here, he knew I was going to be here. Before you were ever here, he knew you were going to be here. And he said, I already have a plan of escape. I have a plan. He said in Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plan that I have for you, saith the Lord, plans to bless you and not harm you, give you a future and a hope. That's what he says to you today. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways. Acknowledge him and he's going to direct your path. I, I don't know where I'm going. I, I can't see it, but, but God, I'm moving. I'm just, I got I to gotta move in order to break through. See, we want to break through without breaking through. But today, we break it through. I just heard in my spirit, your wings are ready. I just heard this in my spirit. Your wings are ready. Woo! I'm ready. Are you ready? I'm ready. Your wings. That means you've been in the caterpillar position for long enough. You've been in the cave for long enough. You've been in the cocoon for long enough. Your wings are ready. And you ain't seen nothing yet. You ain't seen nothing yet. You know when you're pregnant, mama, and you have this expectancy of what you would like your baby to be, but something about it feels unimaginable to know that you can really produce that life until it comes. That's what's about to happen in your next season. It's gonna be better than you even imagined. Yeah, 
yeah, we've lost a few months this year, but we really didn't lose it. That pandemic has birthed something in us. We've almost been in the tradition, the, the traditional state. I don't even know if that's a word, but I made it up. We've been in that place where God was preparing us for that next level. And your wings are ready. Your wings, there's a shift. There's a shift taking place right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Welcome! Everybody tell them welcome. Everybody say welcome. Y'all say welcome. Welcome, 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 welcome to Limitless Church Fayetteville. We are so honored to have you. Man, we know that there's about four or five or six or seven or 20 incredible rooms that you could be in right now. There's so many church services. Some of y'all are so super saved because you go to about five different services a day on Sunday. And that is a beautiful thing because that means your spirit is getting full. So we're Limitless Church. We start back. We start back on Pentecost Sunday. These doors will be open and there'll be people in the booties will be in the seats. And I'm very excited about that. We're getting ready for you. We will open up our, our website so that you can register to come to that service because you're going to have to register because we abide by the law. And I love you too much to put you in harm's way. And we really don't even know what's going on. So we're just going to be precautionary. But you don't want to you don't want to miss Pentecost Sunday. I'm telling y'all something. Something I'm gonna break down that Pentecost, why it's called Pentecost Sunday. And I don't think it's ironic that Pentecost Sunday is at the end of this month. I don't I, I don't think that's ironic at all. And so make sure if you gotta drive here, whatever you gotta do to get here, get your tail in Limitless Church, Fayetteville, 1653, Highway 85 South, Fayetteville, Georgia, 30215. A church alive is worth the drive. We we roll it up in here, man. What? Great job, praise team, music. Thank you, guys. I love y'all so much. All my leaders that are here, thank you, thank you, media. Thank you, sound guy. Just appreciate y'all, my assistants. Just all oh, y'all, just bad. The helps, all, just, just incredible. Thank you. And we're about to give. Are y'all excited to give? Y'all, this is the greatest. Really, I I know that some of y'all don't like to talk about money. But in this process right here, y'all are seeing that during this pandemic, man, my church ain't stopped giving. My online campuses are giving. We are able to do some renovations so that when you come back, you feel like you're in a whole new building. Uh, Thank you for sowing. And today, listen, the Bible says that 10% of your gross goes to God. That means 10 cents on the dollar. 10 cent on the dollar. That's all. Takes the devourer off your money. So right now, there are several ways you can give. You can minimize your screen and you can screen and you can see. You can, all the first two don't even matter to you because you ain't in the building, but you can text to give at 770-574-6844. You can give online by going to limitlesschurch.live. You can also go to Cash App. Give on your Cash App. Give, oh, well, hey. We got a whole concert up in here. I love that boy right there. He just sings. Y'all love how he sings. He he plays his sax seat, saxophone to like I love it. You just bad to the bone. Tell whoever you called, I love them. I just call. Tell them. So you give online at going to limitless church dot live, or you can cash out by going to money sign my limitless church, Venmo, my limitless church, and we about to get into the word. Are y'all ready? Are y'all ready? Are y'all ready? Y'all make sure you sow right now because we're good dirt. We're good dirt. We're good dirt. So, Father, we just thank you right now for every person that is sowing into Limitless Church right now. The people that call this church their online church. Father, we just pray blessings and abundant. We are walking in exceedingly abundantly more than we could ever ask or think. Lord, we thank you for clarity in our minds. We thank you that agitation is being broken off of us. We thank you that confusion is being broken off of us. Father, we thank you today. Deliverance is in the house. Deliverance is in their house. Today, in Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. 
said hundredfold, hundredfold, more stimulus checks. Come on, Jesus. Come on, we prophesy. Free seeds, free seed, free seed. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, so today, y'all, we've been on a series this entire month. When the darkness changes your mind. How many of y'all have loved that? Go on and put a, a happy face. Put a happy face. Put one of your new stickers you invented last night on Facebook. Just drop it in the comment area. And go ahead and share. Share. Push the share button. There's somebody in your news feed that needs a free word today. I'm telling you, it's going to set them free. So share. Push the three little dots and share. Share the YouTube. But we've been talking about when the darkness changes your mind. And so the first week we talked about David running in the cave, hiding from Saul, bully Saul. And he ran into the cave and great things happened there. And then the the week after that we talked about in the belly of hell. We talked about Jonah. And we talked about how Jonah uh, literally uh, found Jesus in the middle of his hell. And how that so many of y'all are finding yourself like Jonah. During this pandemic you're thinking, dear God, how did I even get myself here? And Jonah was told to go one place. He went another place. I'm just going to give you some hope in about two seconds. He went another place, was supposed to go one place. He didn't go. And so what did God do? God does just what he does for you and me. He sent a big whale, a big whale to follow Jonah. And he told Jonah, he told that whale, Jonah, 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 that rebel, that uh, disobedient, just like a lot of us, go swallow Jonah up and get him back to where he needs to be, where he was supposed to be in the first place. And that big whale went and escorted him VIP limo style in the belly of hell all the way back to where he was supposed to be. So that's a word for you when the darkness changes your mind. That's exactly what's happening in this pandemic. And then today, we're going to talk about Daniel. I'm talking about all these people that went into the dungeon, into the dark, and they found themselves in the place. There's nothing like hitting rock bottom and finding out who the rock is at the bottom, which is Jesus. There's nothing like when you look and you can't feel your way through but yet you find yourself on the other side of what you thought was going to take you out, right? So my title today is called Deliverance in the Dungeon. Deliverance in the Dungeon. The number one enemy of praise is what? The number one enemy of praise is problems. When you in the when you is seeing problems all around you, you don't know how you're going to pay your bills, you don't know how you're going to buy some food, all of a sudden quickly the praise goes out the window because when you're looking at problems it's hard to find I don't know about y'all but every single time I've ever found myself in the middle of a problem or in the middle of a life altering situation it's really hard to pray ain't it like like y'all reach out to me and you reach out to other pastors and you just say can you pray for me or your mentor can you pray for me I feel like I want to give up and you can't give up because giving up only prolongs you in that dungeon that you want to get out of in that darkness right that's why the enemy starts paralyzing you he starts making you afraid because you can't see in in the dark we talked about even how how the pirates in one of our seas in one of our sermons we talked about how the pirates always wore one of those those eye patches and I always thought it was because every pirate had their eyes clipped out I just thought that that was their their maybe they're you know getting into this certain group at college you have to do this something I thought was getting your eye out in order to be a pirate but it's not it's that those pirates are always prepared for what's next when they go in the darkness they flip the flat the, the patch to the other eye and they can see perfectly so they're always ready in season and out of season that's the same thing in darkness you realize that you're stronger than you really think you are so in the number one enemy of praise is problem but isn't it so hard to praise while looking at the problem I can't open my mouth why does the enemy do that because the enemy cannot physically touch you but where the enemy gets you is through distraction of offense through the distraction of comparison to the distraction of feeling forgotten through the distraction of feeling like you're in the wrong place when you're really in the right place the enemy starts making you feel hopeless and when you lose hope hope deferred makes the heart weak and so we find ourselves right here, and, and oftentimes in life, I don't know about you, but during this pandemic, a lot of people reached out to me and said, I can't believe I'm here. But what this pandemic is making us do is it's forcing us to get out of the darkness. It's pushing us into, into excellence. It's pushing us into another place. Really, we ain't got nothing to lose. You ain't got nothing to lose. You done lost everything. I put up a meme one day. I said, we all in the same boat. It don't matter if you're a billionaire. We all in the same boat. We're all on house arrest and jobless. 
Because we're all in this place where God has given us a do-over, a reset to recalibrate. What are you going to do in the darkness? What are you going to do when you're stuck in your house? Oh, I am seeing, I'm seeing neighbors I never even knew I had. All of them outside, walking around, riding bikes. You can tell people ain't ridden bikes in forever because they're all wobbly on that bike. We're doing things that we've never done to cultivate an atmosphere that we desire, right? But we've always been scared of cat to do it. And so we're looking today and, and, we're, and we're studying these different scenarios of our lives. And, and even in this, in this season I have watched, and I'm sure you have watched, is you look back and realize there's people in your life that are straight haters. They're trying to bury you, right? They're burying you. They're trying to scare you. They're trying to say, I'm going to say this or I'm going to say that. And all of a sudden, you see all these people rising up and you get your heart palpitating because you got all the time in the world to look and see what everybody's saying about you. Because that you're sitting in your house. You, you know what I'm saying? You're even on your phone pushing your little kid outside on the bike but what's happening is is when people bury you they don't realize that you really are a seed because as long as you have God in your life you're going to bloom again and so this pandemic has been a time for us to bloom so let's get into it the darkness of the lion's den let's think about Daniel I bet you he felt really isolated I bet he felt really lonely see so Daniel lived out his life in a situation not unlike our own he was a godly man trying to live in a worldly culture. To say he overcame is an understatement. He lived in a culture that was very worldly from the time he was 14 years old until he died in his 90s. When he faced the culture issues of his day, the pandemic, the whatever you, whatever you face in your divorce, your heartbreak, your mama with dementia, whatever you're staring at, your son, whatever it is that you're staring at right now, he was in the same kind of pandemic. But when he faced the cultural issues of his day that were in opposition to his faith, he overcame with courage and conviction. You know when you want to clap back? You know when they're trying to bury you? And they're doing it on social media, and you want to clap back? And God tells you, hush up. You're like, no! How many times do y'all type stuff out and then delete it? Y'all know what I'm saying? That's called Jesus conviction. So that's how Daniel lived. He lived with conviction and courage. And I believe that this is God's challenge to all of us to overcome. And he's given us about two more weeks, three more weeks, four more weeks. Some of y'all is given until August in L.A. I'm just saying. Thank you, Lord, I'm not in L.A. But he's given you this time in order to recalibrate and get courage and conviction so that when you start navigating through this new season of your life, you know exactly where you're going. You don't need me to tell you. You know what to say because you've been with God during this time. So let's look at Daniel 6, and I'm going to read right now 6, 1 through 3. Daniel chapter 6, 1 through 3. Daniel 6, 1 through 3. And it says, it says that it pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 satraps. And over these, three governors of whom Daniel was one. That the satraps might give account to them so that the king would suffer no loss. Then this Daniel distinguished himself because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king gave thought to setting him over the whole realm. When people start seeing favor, they start acting up. They start seeing a little favor. They start working behind the scenes. According to this description in Daniel, we realize that the first thing we learn about being an overcomer like Daniel was is that overcomers are always promoted. You can't be promoted if you don't move. You can't be promoted as long as you're laying in your bed. That's why the enemy gets you defeated with depression and wants you to lay in your bed because ain't nothing going to happen in your bed. You want to get married, but you ain't never out of your house. What you think? Your spouse is going to break in and come get you? Right? We start getting defeated, and we stay in our house, and we get defeated, and there's no, no promotion that's going to come in that direction. So according to the description in Daniel 6, Daniel was preferred above all the other leaders. You ever seen those people? They just get elevated, elevated, elevated. And so satrap, I went and looked it up because I'm, I'm one of those that I need simple. Satrap means a local ruler. It means an elder. It means a leader. Let me break that down. It's like a, a usher. It's something, somebody that's got some kind of power. But we realize that Daniel was preferred above all the other governors and satraps, which was a local ruler, because there was an excellent spirit in him. There was an excellent spirit in him. That's what the scripture says. 
This means that he had a good attitude. You're going to bounce back. You're going to get back. You might kick me. You might knock me down. You might, you might talk about me. But one thing is for sure about me is I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I'm coming out of this thing. I might be limping, and I might be pulling my big old thigh, but I'm coming out. And that's, that's what Daniel had on him. He had a good attitude, and he worked hard. He fully fulfilled his responsibility. Here's what he did. Here's some of his characteristics. He was honest. See, y'all lying and stuff, thinking that Jesus don't see you. You're trying to lie for people, but Jesus is seeing you. People see your deeds, but God sees your heart. He was honest. He didn't complain. You ever seen those people always complaining? I'm the type of person, don't you bring nothing to me unless you got a solution. If you got, if, if you're arguing about something, then that means you got enough power to change the situation or why are you even worried about it. It's like those people that beef with you. If you're beefing with me, you better have my phone number because if you ain't got my phone number, you don't know me well enough to be beefing with me, right? And so this is the same thing with him. He never complained. He was always honest. He just did what he was supposed to do. Even when no one was watching, he did what he was supposed to do. When I lay my head down in my bed at night, my biggest desire is, God, let me know that I pleased you. Let anything that is in my heart that is not of you excavate it. Take it out of my life. See, Daniel had continued to honor God with his life, and now God is bringing honor to Daniel. That's what happens. That's why you can't give up. When they've planted you, when they've buried you, when life has buried you, when you got another doctor's report that said you shall die again, and all of a sudden you keep bouncing back, you don't know why you keep bouncing back, but you just know as long as I got a pulse, I ain't quitting, right? These are the kind of people that God always sends to the top because when they got up one more time, but here's the deal. He was victorious. He was an overcomer. And we see this, Daniel would become second in command over all of Persian Empire. A fact that did not go unnoticed by his members. He just knew it. He, everybody that's in his presence just knew this, 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 dude got some, <laughs> this dude just got some favor. And the second thing we learn about overcomers from Daniel, are you an overcomer? Ask yourself that this morning. Look at yourself on that couch. Ask your children. They probably never heard the word overcoming. They need to, they, they're watching their mama. They're watching their daddy. Right now, you're an overcomer. You may not feel like you're doing a great job, but you're doing a doggone awesome job because you are an overcomer. You are making it through this. You're making it through some things that would have taken somebody else out. But see, here's the key. Because he had this favor on him, it did not make him a popular person. You wonder how come people don't like you. Sometimes it's just because they're straight up haters. He was an overcomer, and Daniel is that overcomer. He, per, he showed us that overcomers are often persecuted. But if you're going to be an overcomer, you have to be victorious. You've got to see victory even when you don't smell victory. You got to be more than a conqueror. You got to get back up again and you got to move even when you want to lay in your bed, even when you want to be petty crocker, even when you want to be petty patty. You get back up again. You decide to take bitter and kick it out the door. If you're going to stand above the heap, if you're going to stand above people, you got to shoot higher. You got to realize, I don't know how I'm going, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fly in the dark. God, if I hit a wall, I'm going to bounce back. If I don't know where I'm going and I fall in this cave, if I fall during this pandemic, I ain't got nothing to lose. At least it looks like I tried. See, failure isn't failure because you fail. Failure is failure because you quit moving. You're not stuck in your dungeon. You're not stuck in your divorce. You're not stuck in your daddyless life. You're not stuck because they walked out on you. You're not stuck because you got furloughed. You're stuck because your mind tells you that that was the greatest that you'll ever have. And that's not how our God rolls. Our God says in Ephesians 3.20, one of my favorite scriptures, is that he's going to do exceedingly abundantly more than... You better preach that back in that, in that, in that closet. If you're going to stand above the rest of the people, you are going to shoot at, they're going to shoot at you, they're going to criticize you, they're going to persecute you, and you can even have the cave experience and still get back up again. Feel like you dying with the corona. Dying, I'm coming home, Elizabeth. I get people all the time, pray for me, I got corona. I'm like, you're going to make it. There's more people. Tons more people making it through the corona. I got somebody right now filming me that made it through the corona, Rona. Just because you get corona don't mean you go stay down. You go fight. So Daniel 6 and 4 says, 
that the governors and the local rulers sought to find some charge against Daniel. They'll, 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 they'll cultivate some lie. They'll make up some lie. They'll go back in your past. They'll bring something back from three years ago. Whatever they got to do to make sure you don't make it. Why? Because they're jealous. And they were jealous of Daniel. They were going to try to look up something nasty on him. They were going to try to disqualify him from office. They weren't happy that his promotion, they were so not happy, it was keeping them awake at night. If you are someone watching me tonight and you stayed awake all night long because you're jealous of somebody, you need to get on your knees. Right? They weren't happy about his promotion. And at the core of their hatred was their intense jealousy of his position. He had risen above them and was about to become their superior. You know, people always want what you got until they realize what you had to do to get what you got. Woo! You don't even know the nights I cried when I wanted to give up, when they were, ah, you don't know the trouble I see. But won't he do it? They were unable to find any legal way to stop the appointment of Daniel. His adversaries came up with a plot to take him down. They made up a whole story. I'm looking at some of y'all. I know some of y'all been to this. Can you believe it? All the governors of the kingdom, the administrators, the rulers, the counselors, and the advisors all consulted together. Y'all get mad because what are two people talking about you? They all were plotting against this dude because they knew he just walked in favor. Every day these leaders did what they could to get the king to sign the official order that you can't pray up in here, up in here. The king was considered infallible. And once he put a law on the books, there wasn't no going back. He couldn't withdraw it. We all know about this because even in our jargon today, we always say, if I mess up, I can't get up. You cursing yourself, walking around with soul ties. I ain't never going to love nobody like this again. I ain't never going to get back. Yes, you are. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Greater is he than your mistakes. Greater is he than what they say about you. Greater is he. Oh, I bet you Daniel felt like this. I bet he thought, man, listen, if they talking about me, there must be something great about me. That's how I'm, I'm, I'm filtered like this. Like, the only reason y'all talking about me is because there's something in me that y'all want. Because why are you ever going to talk about somebody that ain't, ain't in your presence? See, haters are just confused fans. And I bet you Daniel understood this. I believe that God has given me this platform because I walk in boldness. And so did Daniel. Today you got to ask yourself, you still stuck from two years ago? It's because you scared a cat. You stop moving. You stop wanting to fly. You allowed your circumstances of two years ago to make your, it, it, they were bigger than what you can see today. Why? Because we begin to make things around us idols instead of Jesus idols. And then when they come falling down, see, the Bible says that it's the little foxes that spoil the vine. So it's those things in your life that you ain't taking care of, people pleasing. This is a great time for you to get free from people. Get delivered from people during the Corona Rona. Leave people in your past that ain't essential to your future. You've done live without them forever. Why are you going to bring them back into your party? Right? That's what Daniel was. Daniel didn't have time for that. He didn't have time to worry about that. See, we are a people like Daniel in whom he got delivered in the dungeon. I bet you he a little scared. I don't know about y'all, but even if you walk on Jesus' clothes, you still walk through some fear during this thing. Like, I don't know if this ain't going to ever. I was watching all my events get canceled. I'm like, dear Lord, I bet you ain't nobody even know my name no more. The devil will have you beating up on yourself. I bet you I ain't never going. Some of y'all living with your ex. Y'all walking through a divorce and quarantine together. I'm just saying, life will hit you and do everything in its power to break you down. But here's what we learned about it. Here's what we learned about it. We are a people like Daniel in whom there is a good spirit. God will use us. Keep my heart right. Keep my heart right, God. If I ain't moving, it's because my heart ain't right. Because God elevates people with good hearts, period. God ain't going to put stuff in the Bible, Vic. There's some of us that are selling through this corona-rona. Why? Because our heart postures are right. 
when your heart postures right, it's like I can take it like 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 sting like a bee, float like a butterfly, sting like a bee, like everything coming against you, and you just flying on through it. You ain't smelling like what you. That's Daniel. The other thing that we learn about Daniel is that he overcomes. Why? Because he was persistent. Persistence, man. When you don't want to get on live, you still get up and fix your hair. You put your wig on. You put some mousse in your hair. You put some makeup on your face. You do some things being persistent because you know that I got to navigate through this thing because we might be in corona, but you're going to remember my name. Why? Because I know that laying in my bed ain't going to get me where God wants to take me. I got to move. That's what Daniel was thinking. You might throw me in that dungeon, but I'm still going to praise. I got problems, which is going to make me praise even harder. So we realized through Daniel that he was an overcomer. And overcomers are very persistent. And I love this about Daniel. In verse 10 and 11 of chapter 6, it says, When Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home. He knew that that, 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 that king, had just signed off, and there was no turning back. What did he do? He didn't go get in his bed. He didn't go get depressed. He went home, and he went into his upper room. I love boldness. He went in his upper room. I bet he opened the windows. (laughs) He opened the windows towards Jerusalem. He knelt down on his knees three times that day. Like, boom, shakalaka, like a boom. I'm doing it, boo. I'm doing it. You wrote me off, but God done wrote me back on. You done tried to shut me down, but God shut me up, man. He, he, she, he's just moving me right on up. And he prayed, and he gave thanks to God. Now, I've heard people say that when Daniel was told he couldn't pray, he went home, and he flung open his windows, and he prayed as loud as he could, which I'm thinking he did, because he was probably from the south side of heaven. That's not what it says. It says he went home just like he always did, went and prayed. That means he didn't have a rebellious bone. That means he wasn't cocky. Every time I'm about to clap back, I hear God tell me in my spirit, Kimberly, there are people watching you. And if you come off your chair to throw tomatoes at a person that goes to the bathroom like you, wakes up with bad head like you, and you're going to let them mess you up, you're going to, these people will never walk back in church again. And guess whose blood's on on, on my hand? Their blood's on your hands. You better shh. Hardest thing ever. But let me tell you what I've learned. When you walk with God, God walks with you. He never turns his back on you. He never leaves you. Even when you think you are in your most difficult situation. If you just hold on, hold on just a little while longer. You'll see God show up. He'll show up. And he will take you through the fire again. I know the road gets rocky. I don't know the song, but man, I hear it in my spirit right now. Come on, Jason Crab. If I keep moving, he'll shift the... That's all I need, man. It says, it says if, you, if you'll show up, Somebody once told me that if God shows up, he's like, he likes to show out. I don't know about you, but that's what I've seen. Here's the key. He went to the dungeon. They threw him in the dungeon. So all the lions could eat him up. The king loved him. The king saw favor all over him. But the king was messed up. So the, the lions, all of a sudden, when they see this light, because that always is what happens when God brings you on the scene, it's like, boom, and everybody's like, oh! my God, who are you? And where did you come from, right? So everybody starts gravitating. So the lions started gravitating and they started going and they're good. They're going to go eat him up, eat him up, eat him up. And then all of a sudden it was like, ah! They got stopped. And the lions wanted to eat him, but they couldn't. Why? Because even when they throw you in the lion's den, the very vipers, the very, the very horrible, grisly Lions that norm, that love food. It's almost like a whale. When they see blood, they come running. They just smell the person. Those lions never, ever touched Daniel. The king laid in his bed all night. This is what happens when people do stuff against you. You sleep in peace knowing God's got you, but they lay in awake all night. That king laid awake all night long. Knew when he touched God's kid, and he couldn't go back on it. 
He laid awake. He couldn't eat. He couldn't sleep. See, all them haters that you're trying to fight, God's got them. God's got them. They lay in a weight. They, they, they're being so convicted for messing with you. That's why you got to take your hands off situations in your life. Because God's going to handle them if you get your hand off. And so we see all of a sudden these lions go and they just curl up around him. And, and Daniel was such a bad to the bone, man. Mr. Jones. He don't just stand in the corner like, I can't move. I can't move. I can't. You know how you get frozen when something's wrong? He's, I can't move. I can't move. He didn't do that. He goes and makes him a whole bed in the middle of the lions. Those lions didn't touch him. Those lions didn't touch him. That next day, the king comes and he's expecting to see this gory, nasty situation. And he sees that Daniel's snoozing. <sighs> Ain't nothing like peace in the middle of a storm. You ever seen those people, man, they can sleep when the whole Bible, I mean, it's like a whole earthquake, and everybody's like, ah, all over Facebook, did you feel it? Somebody's like, no, I didn't feel a doggone thing. Why? Because you know God's got you. You know that in the midst of whatever's breaking around, it says in Psalms 91, it says people may fall on your right, they may, thousands may fall on your left, but can't nothing touch this, can't touch this, nah. Why? Because you're covered by the blood. Why? Because God deals with the matter of the heart. Why? Because you kept your heart right. You are an overcomer. Even in the midst of this pandemic, you aren't scared of cat of nothing. You got a whole free seed of the stimulus check. Why? Because you praise God in the problem. You know what I love about this story? When he sees that the lions is a whole pillow, I bet it's down in feather. Man, I love me a good pillow. I love the Ritz. I love staying at the Ritz. Because the Ritz got them heavenly beds. You know what I'm saying? Once you once you lay your head on them heavenly beds, <laughs> you don't the Hampton don't cut it no more. It's like, I bet you that's how it was in the lion's den. He made it cool to be in the lion. Because he wasn't scared of nothing. I don't know what you stared at today. But here's what happens. Let me roll this thing around for you. Every single one of those people that plotted against him got thrown in the lion's den. All them haters got taken care of. They getting, they getting it. Their mamas, their daddies, their wives, their children, everybody. This is why you got to be careful who you hang with. <laughs> Because you're going to get thrown in bad company, crabs the soul. Everybody connected to these men that took him down all got thrown into the lion's den, and they ate the mess out of them. They, they were gone, poof, while Daniel was an overcomer. I don't know what you're walking through today, but when I tell you that there is deliverance in your dungeon, there is deliverance right where you at. The thing that I love about God is he'll take your hell. He'll take your darkness and give you a whole bestseller out of it. You will write the best book you've ever had in your life. You will write shattered glass in the middle of the worst divorce of your life. You will write hush until you heal in the worst devastating season of your life when you wanted to talk but you didn't. Be like Daniel today. Get up. When you get up, you're one step closer to your miracle because why? There is hope. You're Daniel today. You're Daniela. He said, come on. See, God's a gentleman. God's a gentleman. He's not going to force you to get up. He's not going to force you to forgive. He's not going to force you to walk around your house when you ain't got nothing but peace and say, thank you, Jesus. In the midst of the fight of your life, when everything's shattered, when you feel lonely, when you feel forgotten, when you feel like, man, I'm starting over after 28 years, he's saying, I got you. At 38 years old, all of a sudden, you're like, it's okay. It's okay. I'm getting up. I'm getting up. Somebody today in my inner circle wrote a, a, on a post, and it said, for, for, for the last 20 years, I just was so embarrassed about a divorce that I went through after 20 years of marriage. 
And she said, during this pandemic, I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. Why? Because he knows my name. He doesn't take God by surprise. He already knew when you married him 20 years ago that you were going to be divorced. He's not a mean, mean father, but he did. life just happens. He knew that you were going to get back up again. Today, you got to get back up again. Today, you got to lay your head on the adversity. Today, you got to fight like hell. Today, you got to have your old hell no moment. Today, you got to take back everything the devil stole. Today, you got to take back your peace. Today, you got to get up out of your pieces and grab peace. Stop letting people pull you into their pieces and you pull them into your peace because it ain't over if you say Kim I don't know I feel like you're in my room I am because God is a divine appointment kind of God you didn't get on this live today just because you wanted to you got on here today because it's a divine appointment. It wasn't a coincidence. A coincidence is when God intervenes and chooses to stay anonymous. And he said, I want you in today. I want to set you free today. You cannot get set free until you make up in your mind, I'm getting set free. You cannot, if you are petty, if everything makes you mad, if everybody makes you mad, if everybody, I'm always looking for a reason to be offended. You will never get to your victory. Because you can't get out of your feelings and get into some healing. You need Jesus in your heart. If you say, Kim, I've never accepted Jesus into my heart. Let's do it right now. Let's do it right now. Right now. Right now. If you've never walked in a church, thank you, God, that today is your encounter. God ain't like Buddha. You ain't got to rub his belly. You ain't got to give him no fruit. He's right there, and he sticks closer than a brother. He's not a genie in a bottle. He's saying, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon me. I will give you peace. Repeat this prayer after me. Say, Father, put a number one. Just drop a number one if you're accepting Jesus into your heart right now. Limitless Church loves you. I want to know. I want to dance on the devil's big punk tail today. Every person he loses today, I'm going to dance. I'm going to dance. My staff's going to dance. My leaders are going to dance. Listen, today, 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 say, Father, forgive me of my sins. I don't want to fight stuff that I don't need to be fighting. I want deliverance in my dungeon. I want deliverance in my pandemic. I want deliverance today. So, Father, forgive me. If I've done anything that is not of you, God, let me forgive my ex. Come on, just say it. Say, God, let me forgive my dad. Whoever you've been holding on to today, you got to let go of it. It don't matter if you get prayed for by every bishop on the planet. It ain't going to work until you have a changed heart. You got to let go. And holding on to that unforgiveness, being mad because they threw you in the dungeon, because they look mad because they, they, they lied on you, they talked about you. Holding on to that is like drinking poison and hoping they die. Today, surrender it. Give it over to God. God, I forgive. Forgive me, God, as I forgive them. Lord, I thank you that my ladder shall be greater. Come on, open your mouth and pray. Lay hands on your children. Lay hands on your spouse. Lay hands on your checkbook. Lay hands on your body. Wherever you sick in your body, you are going to be healed. The Bible says that by his stripes you are healed. You're healed in your depression. You're healed in your anger. You're healed in your bitterness. You're healed in your cancer. You're healed in the corona. You're healed. You're healed. You're healed. You're healed, you're healed today. In Jesus' name we pray, and I cancel every plot, every plan, every scheme the enemy has devised against you or your family members. And it ain't over until God says it's over. I pray for boldness over you. I pray for conviction over you. I pray, I pray peace that surpasses all understanding in your home right now. I tell you, I, listen, I even, God just dropped this in my spirit, the agitated spirit. Somebody's kids acting up. I speak to your child right now in the name of Jesus that you are healed. Your heart is healed. Your mind is healed. And guess what? Your destiny is being unfolded. This pandemic is bringing your destiny to light. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. I dare you to get up and go, I'm back. Hello, new me. Hello, new world. Hello, 
joy. Hello, peace. It's yours today. You ain't fight this battle, baby. God's got your back, your side, your front, your top, your bottom. Limitless Church, we love you. Limitless Church Online, we love you. RTK Inner Circle, we love you. You you are covered. All of these leaders are covering you. Get up, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up, and take it back. Take it back by force today. In Jesus' name, amen.